let's have a conversation about psychic bullying. Uh, I see this happen a lot in the spiritual community. And the reason I feel the need to address it is because first and foremost, um, I think some of it is coming from a place of seeking to be helpful and not uh, having an understanding or awareness of healthy boundaries when it comes to psychic readings, psychic abilities. Um, and so to, to break it down first, psychic bullying essentially is when someone violates your privacy or imposes on you psychically or energetically or seeks to diminish you, your psychic abilities, your intuition, uh, your healing abilities, or just even diminish you energetically um, through their own energy, through their own uh, uh, psychic or intuitive capabilities. Um, and, you know, this can show up in so many ways. And it's certainly, it's happened to me. Uh, in my experience, a number of times, I will also completely out myself and say that, um, you know, especially in, in the beginning of my work, there were times where I strayed into doing this without realizing. Um, and again, this is a conversation that's not about judgment. It's not about blaming. It's about awareness, uh, both for people who might be doing this, you know, unintentionally, but also for people who are tolerating it or who are experiencing it, who don't realize that that's what this is. So some classic examples reading you, your energy, your uh, uh, future, your past, your past lives, your Akashic records, whatever, without your permission. Reading you energetically or seeking to shift or change or manipulate something for you energetically. Diminishing or dismissing your uh, insights, your intuitive feelings, your, uh, you know, psychic hits that you're receiving because it makes uh, another person feel insecure in their own abilities or in their own authority. You see this a lot, especially in the teacher-student relationship where uh, a teacher or it could be a healer or it could be a psychic or it could be your friend you know really feels that they need to maintain some kind of established authority or superiority compared to you it can also be judging it can be judging it can be shaming uh shaming or judging you for not being uh, someone's interpretation of what being spiritual is or living a spiritual lifestyle is or as you know espousing or embodying beliefs um or faiths faiths that another person doesn't have and again we see this a lot my truth is the one right truth. My path is the one right true path. And anything else that isn't part of that or doesn't believe in that or doesn't espouse or embody that um, is wrong. You're wrong. This is, you know, the right God or this is the right way to do the prayer or, or whatever uh, it might be. Another one that's a little more insidious is when someone seeks to snuff out or steal your light or stem your blossoming. Again, because this is something that in some way they find threatening. And it can also be seeking to energetically dominate or manipulate or oppress a person some way. And again, it's not about making, you know, any one way of working or any one way of, of doing thing wrong. It's about being aware of a person's free will and honoring a person's free will, honoring a person's boundary, keeping your eyes on your own mat, as they would say in a yoga class or staying in your own lane. This is something to, to be really aware of just because you're psychic, just because you can hear extrasensory things or see extrasensory things or know things or receive things or you have the ability to to shift or manipulate energy does not 
give you the right to do that to another human being. It does not give you the right to interfere in someone else's process. It does not give you the right to tell them about themselves energetically, to tell them their future, their past, whatever else, to give them intuitive information without their permission. The second you start doing that, you are violating a person's free will. And you may think, well, I'm helping this person or I'm receiving this. And so there's got to be a point to this or whatever. But the second you overstep a healthy boundary and you violate someone's free will, you're no longer acting from a place of loving wisdom. You're acting from a place of ego or entitlement when it comes to what you're receiving and the person standing in front of you. And you're no longer in a place of high loving clean frequency. So if you find yourself doing this, um, it's beneficial to just sort of take a step back for a second and be like, why am I feeling motivated to do this right now? Do I feel triggered? Do I feel insecure? Maybe you received information that you feel is really valuable to this person that can be of service to this person, but ask them first and if they say no you know what i i don't i don't want to hear about it or no this isn't the right time or no that makes me feel uncomfortable if you're willing to step back and honor that person's free will and honor that person's process then you're staying in alignment with a really high frequency really fast vibration place of honoring free will and giving whatever else you have to up to the universe and letting go of whatever else. So really having and starting to cultivate that awareness, I think is so important in this community because we see it. We see it even in terms of, you know, comments in social media, comments on YouTube, whatever else. Oh, your chakras are out of alignment or I'm reading into your aura right now and you really need help with this or, you know, whatever it might be. And again, it's like, guys, this isn't, this isn't appropriate. It's not appropriate unless that person has, you know, uh, given permission and has requested that feedback. It's stepping beyond that healthy boundary of free will. If you experience psychic bullying, disengage immediately, step back, tell the person to stop. Let them know you have a healthy boundary and it's not appropriate and you're asking them to please honor your free will and please honor that boundary. A strong, strong statement in this conversation is to say to someone simply, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to read me. You're not allowed to give me intuitive or psychic information or touch any part of my aura or reach into my chakras or whatever else. You're not allowed to do that without my permission and I'm not giving you permission. Ground and re-empower yourself. The most simple way to do that is to connect with your breathing. When we feel that we're in a moment of conflict or confrontation or that something's being violated or something doesn't feel right, you know, we can get anxious. There's a fear response to that that's very natural and our breathing breathing becomes very shallow, very quick. So after you've stepped back and said stop, if you take just even 30 seconds to a minute just to connect with your breathing consciously, breathe more deeply down into your body and re-engage with your sense of personal power, re-engage with your body, there's an immediate energy shift that happens that's very empowering. You can also, you know, look someone in the eye and affirm your authority. And that kind of is counterintuitive because a lot of times in, you know, psychic protection, uh, we talk about, you know, looking right here, not looking at someone in the eye, but looking right here, sort of in their third eye area, because you're still facing them. Um, but you're not engaging with them energetically and giving them connection to your energy. But after you have said stop, you're not allowed, you've stepped back, you've grounded, you've re-empowered yourself, coming from that place of power and looking someone in the eye and saying, you know, you're not allowed to do this is very powerful. It's very affirming. And this is another way that you can respond in a way that feels in alignment with yourself.
One of my favorite psychic protection teachings, which helps, you know, to snuff the power out of something right away is to laugh it off. And I learned that a long time ago from watching The Wizard of Oz, where Glinda the Good Witch laughs off the Wicked Witch in Munchkin Land and says, you have no power here. And in that instant, boom, that Wicked Witch had no power and Glinda knew it. And so as silly as that might sound, the exact same thing applies here. If someone's seeking to diminish you, if someone's seeking to oppress you psychically, energetically, the second you laugh them off and say, you don't have any power here, they don't. That becomes a truth. There are crystals that can help you um, if you have experienced uh, psychic bullying or if you are experiencing psychic bullying to help support you. So the crystals I recommend are Aqua Aura. Aqua Aura is really powerful because it helps to bolster uh, the natural energy defenses of your aura. It also helps to empower your throat chakra when you're feeling afraid, when you're feeling insecure, when you're feeling diminished to speak up for yourself. Hematite is one of my absolute favorite crystals when it comes to being empowered, affirming boundaries and holding your, your ground because hematite is like an anchor. It drops you boom, right into your body. It's fortifying, it's reinforcing, it's strengthening, having that connection to that energy in yourself. Um, is really, really healthy when it comes to facing any kind of difficult situation of which, you know, facing psychic bullying definitely is one. Black tourmaline, one of those just all round beneficial crystals for energy protection, for psychic protection. You know, it's a good thing to wear if you feel that you might be encountering some of that. And then also red jasper, because red jasper is the stone of the brave. It's a crystal of courage, of steadfastness, of conviction, of grounding. And it's slow and it's steady in terms of its vibration and its frequency. So it helps you all round feel really empowered. If you're looking for for uh, uh, more tips, more techniques on psychic protection, on affirming, you know, uh, healthy boundaries, especially if you're an empath, you guys can definitely go to my Crystalline Academy. You can check out my course on Psychic Shield, which teaches you how to shield yourself energetically and also how to shield a space. And you can also check out my Crystal Empowerment for Empaths, which takes work like this a step further because it teaches you how to take crystal energy, how to infuse it into your aura and how to work with it within yourself to empower yourself so that eventually you don't even need the crystals. If you'd like to read the text from this video, read the points, read the tips, uh, bookmark them on your computer or your phone, you can go to my blog. I wrote an article on psychic bullying as well and I've included the link in the description if that can be of service to you. So please take it to heart and if you do feel, oh gosh, you know, I have done some of this. Don't judge yourself. It's okay. We're all here on our path to learn, to grow, to explore, and awareness and consciousness is always at least 50% um, of the lesson, 50% of the game and of the process. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do hope it's of service to you guys, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon. So please do subscribe uh, for more videos.